Okay, today we're going to hit the classes of bacteria. Yesterday we talked about the phyla of bacteria, so now we're going to further break those phyla down into classes. We'll start with the easiest two first. Yesterday we talked about um, Tenericutes, how they have no cell wall, because if you have 10 men, there's you may as well have no wall at all because they'll scale the wall. There's only one class that goes into Tenericutes, and that's Molecutes. And so um, there's not a whole lot of memorization to do. Um, I do happen to notice that 10 and mall kind of sounds like no wall. Um, but again, it's, it's the only one that goes there, so there's not a whole lot that you have to worry about remembering there. Mendocicutes, um, we talked about how men tend to like to be adventuresome and visit exotic locations. And Archaebacteria is the class that's located or that's um, within that particular phylum. An archaeologist uh, investigates very exotic locations, places that we don't know a whole lot about. So that's kind of how all those three names, I associate those three names together. Um, the other two, uh, you have to be a little bit more creative in, in coming up with some, some memory tips for this. Let's start with Firmicutes first. Remember, this is the one where I said I am positive that I am going to turn blue and freeze to death um, and my body's going to become firm. So that's how we remember that particular phylum. This particular phylum then is broken down into two different classes and the classes are based on what shape the bacteria are. Um, Fermi bacteria is baked into the, um, the cocci and the bacilli. Um, these are the spherical shape and the bacilli are the rod shaped. And so if I think about a spherical shape and a rod shape, and then phallobacteria is any other kind of shape. One of the shapes that, that we learned is the, the helical shape or the spiral shape. If I wanted to sit on one of those shapes, I wouldn't really want to sit on a spiral because I don't think it would be very, it would be very uh, stable. It's a good place for me to sit. I'd much rather sit on something that was um, spherical shape, like maybe a big exercise ball or something that was more rod shaped, like a bench. So I could see myself, a, a rock might even, a rock might be spherical shaped. So I could sit on something like this. I could not sit on something like this. So I would want to sit on something that's firm so I don't end up falling on the ground. So to me, these shapes look like they would provide a firm place to sit where this shape doesn't look like a firm place to sit. So that's how I remember the difference between these two classes. Now on your, um, diagram in your notes, you'll notice that I have all of these on the on the same level going horizontally. My board just wasn't big enough, so don't let this confuse you, the fact that it's a little bit lower down here. The last um, class that, or phylum that we need to talk about is Gracilocutes, um, the ones that are gram-negative and will stain red. These, as opposed to being um, based on the bacteria's shape, they're based on whether the bacteria performs photosynthesis or not. If you remember photosynthesis means they're autotrophic and it means that they're producing their own food. So I have three um, specific classes and you can break the words down to help you remember which class goes with um, which characteristic. Two of the three classes are photosynthetic and you'll see the word photo in each one of those, oxyphotobacteria and antoxyphotobacteria, both of those are photosynthetic because you see the word photo in there. Oxy stands for oxygen. It's a prefix that means oxygen. Oxyphotobacteria means it does produce oxygen. So that oxy will help you remember that the oxygen is produced by these bacteria. I also told you in your notes that if you have the prefix a or an in front of a word, it means not. And so here I have the prefix oxy, but I also have the prefix an, which means not. So no oxygen photosynthesis. So the an means no oxygen is being produced, but these bacteria are photosynthetic also. Then you kind of got the one that's left over, the scotobacteria. Um, it's not photosynthetic, but there's no word photo in the word. So again, there's, there's no reason to think that they would be photosynthetic based on the name. So to kind of sum everything up here, um, your ones that have no cell wall and your um, mendocicutes with the exotic cell wall, they only have one class each, so those aren't too tough to keep straight. The firmicutes are broken down into two classes and they're based on what shape the bacteria are. 
The gracilla cuties is based on whether the bacteria are photosynth photosynthetic or not, and then whether the photosynthetic um, bacteria are producing oxygen or whether they're not producing oxygen. So hopefully those memory tips will help you. Again, on your test, I will give you the names of the phyla and the classes, and all you'll have to do is look at them and be able to say, oh yes, I remember that this name goes with this characteristic, and so then if I give you the characteristics of a certain bacteria, you'll be able to put that bacteria into the correct phyla and class.